Hello friends, today we would be doing the identification of copper ions. Copper belongs to group 2. The group reagent is hydrogen sulfide in dilute hydrochloric acid. First of all, we inspect the solid salt and prepare the original solution. The solid salt appears blue in color and it is crystalline in nature. Now we would be preparing the original solution. The original solution for copper can be very easily prepared by dissolving some of the solid salt in distilled water and you get a blue colored solution. The blue color is due to the partially filled D orbitals of the copper. And the original solution is ready. The next step is to add the hydrochloric acid. Actually, we would have already added the hydrochloric acid as part of the group analysis for group 1 and since that is negative here, so we don't have any precipitate or any, or any reaction that has occurred. Now, we would be passing hydrogen sulfide. That means, if we don't get a precipitate on addition of the hydrochloric acid, we would then go into the same solution, we would pass the hydrogen sulfide. For passing the hydrogen sulfide, there must be a Kipps apparatus in your lab. If there is no Kipps apparatus, we would use just ferrous sulfide with dilute acid and we pass that gas through our solution. Here I have prepared the ferrous sulfide with hydrogen sulfide and passing the gas through the solution. We will give a gentle heating to the ferrous sulfide with the acid solution so that the reaction takes place much faster and more amount of hydrogen sulfide gas is formed. You can see that on bubbling the hydrogen sulfide gas there is formation of a black precipitate. Now we have to differentiate this between lead and copper but since we have already ruled out copper by adding the hydrochloric acid the group 1 test so this black precipitate means that it is copper. The copper ions reacted with hydrogen sulfide forming the black precipitate of copper sulfide. If it was arsenic ions, we would have got a yellow precipitate. Now we have two ions in group 2 that is copper and arsenic. To differentiate between these, we add ammonium sulfide and check the solubility of the precipitate. For this, we take some of the precipitate formed in the previous experiment. Now we will be adding ammonium sulfide solution that is yellow in color you can see. On adding that, we see that the precipitate does not dissolve. If the precipitate does not dissolve, copper ions may be present. Let be already ruled out. But if the precipitate dissolves, then it is arsenic ions. Since the precipitate did not dissolve, we will now take some of the precipitate in a test tube and add dilute nitric acid and sulfuric acid and boil the contents. To the precipitate I am adding dilute nitric acid. It's actually a 50% solution of nitric acid. And now I will be adding dilute sulfuric acid. Actually this step of adding dilute sulfuric acid is optional which means that you can omit. The only aim of adding this sulfuric acid is that after boiling we should get copper sulfate solution that is a, a blue solution. So now I am boiling the contents of the test tube and you can see that on boiling the contents it is getting dissolved. Uh, here two reactions are taking place leading to formation of copper sulfate. One is that the sulfide is reduced to sulfur and this sulfur will be reacting with the copper and it will be forming the copper sulfate or we will be getting the copper sulfate due to adding the sulfuric acid. Either way, our aim is to produce the copper sulfate solution. And here we have the blue, greenish blue colored copper sulfate solution. Into this solution, we will be adding ammonium hydroxide after cooling. After cooling the test tube, we are adding the ammonium hydroxide. And on adding the ammonium hydroxide, we get a deep blue color. And into this deep blue colored solution, we will be adding potassium ferrocyanide. 
You can see that there is formation of a chocolate brown color on adding the ferrocyanide which confirms the presence of copper ions. The nitric acid and sulfuric acid reacted with the precipitate of copper sulfide forming the greenish blue colored solution of copper sulfate. Copper sulfate was formed by two methods. One was the sulfur reacted with nitric acid forming sulfuric acid which reacted with the copper sulfide and also we directly added the acid. Copper sulfate formed reacted with ammonia forming the deep blue colored basic copper sulfate. It also reacted with potassium ferrocyanide forming the chocolate brown precipitate. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell button so that you won't miss my new videos. Bye.